Okay, hello everyone, we're back. Hope everyone's having a good Sunday evening, afternoon. Uh, we're gonna do live with Sara Zamani, one of the awesome Hastings 2L law students that I got to meet this summer and work with. So let's see. Okay. Uh. Oh, oh, sorry, people. Okay. Okay, my phone froze for a second. So let's see. Okay, Sarah is joining us in a second. Thank you, Azam. Thank you, Mojdajan. Hi. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for everyone joining us on this Sunday afternoon. I hadn't uh, caught up with Sarah for a while, so I was like, let's just catch up live so everyone gets to meet you too, Sarah John. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's been um, it's been a while since we last spoke, so it's nice to catch up. Yeah. So to start, Sarah, um, it was a travesty because only yesterday we realized that you actually were in this group, and I don't know how I. <laughs> I failed to add you, so uh, PSA for anyone watching, feel free to add your friends, colleagues, prospective law students, uh, anyone you think is going to benefit. So, sorry, John, uh, since you are in the group and you're just joining this awesome community, tell us, uh, let me introduce Sarah to the world before we get started. Yeah, so um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to, you know, be introduced to the whole worldwide legal community that is this group. Um, I'm a 2L at Hastings um, in California. I'm originally from Toronto. Um, and, you know, I'm very interested in corporate law, transactional, like that's always been my goal. It's really what gets me going. And so hopefully, in two years, um, I'll be down that path. <laughs> And it's so funny you say that uh, when I met you first time this summer on Zoom because we're we're Zoom 2020 friends. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, you were like dressed like a, before you were about to go to a meeting to negotiate a merger agreement. Like I was just so impressed because you yeah. you know you walk the walk you talk the talk. You were really interested in, in this stuff, so that was great. Thank you. So how is your year going in this crazy law school? It's been such an adjustment, you know. Um, so I was Zoom law school um, in like half of my 1L year too, right? So back in March, we all transitioned to Zoom um, right after our reading week. And it's gotten better, the transition. Um, before it was like on Microsoft Teams, like our professors had about two days to really like transition their entire course. Um, so understandably, it's gotten better, and even the technologies, they've created more features now for, like, online learning, but it is still such a challenge, I think. Um, you know, I never realized the impact of just being in that educational environment surrounded by, like, other students, like, taking notes, studying, and just the aura that, like, a school building gives to you um, and, like, motivates you to study and, like, be productive, kind of. And so that's been really, like, the challenge to, you know, try and get into that study mood when you're at home or, you know, there's really nothing else that you can do. You can't go to libraries or anything. Um, and then just Zoom itself, like, you know, being on class, a two-hour class on Zoom, within, like, the second hour, you're really, it's so hard to stay focused. It's so tiring. So you get, like, dressed up like you're going to school for classes still? Yeah, you know, I try to. Um, I try to, like, still, like, keep that routine, you know, have my morning coffee um, at first, like, way back in March because I couldn't, like, I read this article that, you know, your commute signals to your brain that it's time to transition from, like, home to work. And so I would go up and down my stairs in my building, like, like once to just, like, like, replicate that commute that I'd have and then just like get a coffee when I was back home so I still try and like keep the same routine that I had and just you know I think if I was like in sweatpants or pajamas like all day I just would never get anything done because I'd be like yeah. so home <laughs> you are so disciplined I, I 
I gave up for a while and then just recently I started putting more effort into that. And, uh, it's, it's definitely hard. Yeah. So did you do like group, uh, like study groups for your second semester at all or no? No, um, second semester was really crazy because um, I'm not sure if you know, Hastings was one of the last schools to go credit, no credit. Um, I think it was like one of five left in the U.S. to go credit, no credit. So, you know, we were still studying, but it was really difficult to get those study groups. Like I know others did study groups. Um, some people who lived in the Hastings residence of Tower, they did study groups like in person. Some people did it on Zoom but um, or, like, Microsoft Teams. But to me, I just figured, like, you know, Teams is just you were studying, like, quietly yourself. Um, yeah. So it didn't really make sense, and it was just transitioning. Um, so I spent more time, like, re-watching lectures and just really making sure I had the notes down um, because I realized, like, the re recalling stuff that I'd learned in person was so much easier than recalling stuff that I'd learned online. So I had to put a little bit more effort into that, which was, oh, yeah. yeah. I hadn't even thought about that, but like sometimes you remember like the moment someone said yeah. something, like they were on this, in this corner of the room, the teacher said this, wow, yeah. everything is like two dimensional. Exactly. Yeah. And so I really like, like you said, like I focused on like, you know, if I was like writing something, I remember like where something was on like the slide or a page or where the yeah. teacher was standing when they'd say that. Or, you know, if someone asked a question, who asked it, um, where they were in the room. But online, you couldn't have that. So I think those cues definitely, you know, they detract from, like, the educational experience not having them. Uh, by the way, hi, Atu Sejan. Hi, Ali Musavi. Uh, Sarah, if you don't know, uh, Azam Zara, they're all part of our community. And yeah. hopefully we'll all meet in a real way. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. So, like... Um, so for me, right, working from home, like, it has its challenges, but like, I, I still like it more than going to the office. Um, if I had to pick 100% this or 100% that, I'd pick this. So like, if I asked you that question, what would you pick? I would pick 100% the office. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really, I like that separation. Um, yeah. And you know, I don't know what it is. I like the feeling of being in that environment that is, like, conducive. And I think maybe, like, I live in, like, a, a studio. Like, I don't really have a set, like, office room. Right? So I think maybe if I had that, it may have been different. But right now, like, I can't wait. I never, you know, had this much desire to get back to school than yeah. I do right now. Um, but, you know, it's. I think it's different for every person. And it's also different, like around your circumstances, right? Like, I am by myself, like, you know, I have family or anything like that here. So it, it makes more sense for me to be able to be in person in, like, an office than working from home. So is it, does it get hard? Because, uh, yeah, you live by yourself. It's been, like, what, 10 months now? It's actually yeah. hard, right? Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard, um, especially, like, in the beginning. It was, like, just you don't see anyone, you know, by yourself, everywhere was closed as well, like coffee shops, everything. And I remember at like the start, I wouldn't even go out, like everything just delivered to my house. So it was really hard, like being alone. Um, and it really detracts from your motivation, you know, not having that human interaction, because even like through Zoom or FaceTime, it's not the same, I think. Um, yeah. But now it's just kind of like, you know, I've gotten used to it a little bit. And it's just about staying busy, I think. You know, when you say busy, you don't realize um, how much time you have by yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 I kind of identify with that. Like, I, I, if I'm by myself, like when my wife travels for a week, I'm useless. <laughs> I don't do anything productive. I just eat a lot of food, sleep a lot. Um, so I need to be around people to motivate me. Like, I'm yeah. definitely lazy by nature in that sense. <laughs> Um, oh my God! So do you have friends? Like, are, are you able to, you know, social distance, hang out with classmates? And so, is there are there a lot of people left still here? Um, a lot of people left. Um, you know, went back to live with their families or moved to like other towns that were cheaper in rent, um, to yeah. save on money, which makes sense. Um, so there wasn't a lot of people until like school started back up in August. But recently, you know, some people have come back. Um, and I have friends that come up and visit from, like, L.A., so I get to see them, like, every couple of weeks, 
just hanging out. So it's been nice like that, um, you know, just having like small socially distanced friend gatherings. Um, but, you know, it's mo it's less than it was before, definitely. But you know, I can't wait until I can just go to a coffee shop and just, you know, sit outside yeah. with some couple of friends and just like chat and just talk without worrying about COVID. Yeah, we gotta do that. By the way, sorry. Hi, Hedy John. Hi, Arash. Hi, Navid. Uh, thanks Hi, everyone. for joining us. Um, so, Sara, some fun questions. Yeah. Favorite topic so far in law school? Oh, contract law. Con okay. Contracts. Born MBA lawyer. At least favorite topic so far in law school. Civil procedure, I'd have to say. <laughs> okay, some cool fact you learned recently. Some cool fact I learned recently. Um, the poison pill was created um, by Wachtell and Lipton. I didn't know that. Um, and I'm learning about that now, so it's really interesting. There's a post in the group. Uh, I think it's on their inspiration tag. It's about the history of Wachtell. And I always look up to it because it was four Jewish lawyers that were just fed up with discrimination and bitch in your firms against Jewish lawyers. And they're like, you know what? We're going to start our own law firm. And not just that, like, we're going to start the best law firm in, in that exactly. field that we just did it. I love that story. Yeah. You know, I heard about, um, our professor was talking about their history, and, like, it was just crazy. I was like, I love this. This is great. Yeah. So. So, Sarajan, what are your goals, vision for the future, like, know, three years, five years? What, what do you see? Oh, you know, um, three years down the line, you know, I hope, to be working um, and, you know, just being done with school and just being working, getting busy um, in corporate. Um, I hope to specialize in m and um, And then five years down the line, you know, I've thought about this a lot um, to maybe go back in Canada and get my Canadian JD. Um, it's a one-year program. I can do it on my own time while still working. So it's not like I'd have to physically be back there. Um, and it's just one year you self-study a couple of courses and you take an exam. So, you know, I think five or six years down the line, that may be something I'd do because then, you know, I'd have dual JDs. Um, but, yeah, it's always in the back of my head. So we'll, we'll see. Thank you, President of Iranian Lawyers in North America. Because you yes. Canada. <laughs> um, so does Canada have a bar exam too? They do, yeah, per um, province, I believe, yeah. So okay. it would still be like I'd still have to take um, if I did want to practice there, but um, I would just be able to get the JD without having to take the bar yet. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, yeah. that uh, sounds like a great plan. I'm sure you miss home, so I hope to you get um, uh, how, how many times a week or day do you speak with your mom? Every night. Every night. <laughs> I, um, that's always been a tradition. Every night I call my baba and my maman. I talk with them for about an hour um, just to catch up. And, like, my little sister, too. With her, it's a whole separate hour. And she invites me to, like, play video games now and everything. So she's all high tech. <laughs> like, um, for any non-Iranians watching this now or later, you got to call your mom Every... once a day at least. At least. Otherwise, the next day, you got to spend twice as much time talking <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to call them tonight and ask my mom on, um, about a cabo kubide recipe for like the pan ones on how to make those. So. <laughs> oh, there is a guy on YouTube. His name is Javad Javadi. And he's very distinctive looking. Like once you see a video of him, you'll know him. He talks a certain way. And he has amazing recipes. And I just remembered because three weeks ago, I, I could never make my cabo kubide like my mom made it. Yeah. Um, and so I watched a video from him, and that was the first time he came out just beautiful. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, because I've been craving kebab, so you know, I want to be able to make some, learn how yeah. to do that. The other one I love is uh, makaroni, you know, have you had that mm -hmm. like Persian style? Yeah, that's my specialty. What? I, yeah, I know how to make that so well, and like my tajik, like it like grows around it too. It's like a oh, nice. Oh, that's, cool. that's so, so that's well. Yeah. Beef zamini or makaroni tajik? Makaroni tajik. Okay, and do you pick uh, spaghetti? Because sometimes my mom made it with like penne. Sometimes. It's mm -hmm. No, I make it with um, the tajik itself with farfalle because it's thin. 
So the ones that are like bow ties, because it's thin, it easily covers the entire bottom of it. So it ends up being like really good, like crispy tajik. Wow. Yeah, so on the side too, or the side? Yeah, right? you just build it up a little bit on the side and like wow. they can like interlock on each other. So it, it stays really well. <laughs> you flash me, Buffy. You make like a rug tag. Yeah. <laughs> you make a tadic, or a tadic flash me, Buffy. <laughs> oh my god. So what else? What else do you cook? Um, tadic Irani is like the one um, rice tadic. I know all the tadics. Like that's one of my favorites. Um, and <laughs> salad d'olvie. I don't do that. Yeah, so I know a couple, um, but I really want to start learning the Khorosts. Yeah. yeah. Fesenjun is my favorite, so. Okay, I was going to tell you the secret, except for Fesenjun, but oh. both Persian Khorosh are the same recipe. You just change the, the thing in it. So all of them are you fry onion, then you fry the meat with it, then spices, then tomato paste, mm -hmm. and then meat, water. <laughs> But whether it's eggplant, then you put eggplant in it. Yeah. It's like uh, a cat ass, you put a cat. Yeah. yeah. That's the base. Oh my gosh. No, yeah, that's the the one thing I want to learn is the horosh and catch your bottom jun too, because those that's I find are difficult, but <laughs> I'm going to learn them eventually. Which, uh, when you crave Persian food, which San Francisco spot you head on? Um, I go to Meikade. Yeah, yeah, but my favorite is actually in the Bay Area, um, Rehan, down in San Jose. Oh. It's a small little tiny place, but in my opinion, they have the best kebab ever. And every time I go, I get like catering bins, a couple, and then I just freeze them. And then like I'm able to like heat them up at home on top of the rice, so it ends up being fresh. Wow. Yeah. I haven't like, even heard of it actually. Yeah, it's it's so small. It's literally like when you drive up to it, you think like this is not like an actual place because it's so tiny. It looks like, you know, just like a stop on the side of the road. But it's beyond phenomenal kebab, like even better than the ones I've had in Iran, I'd say. So, wow. really, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go there. That's, yeah, it's somewhere to hit up. Sorry, Joe, what can we do for you, this community, like all of us in the group, the, the, the Iranian lawyers, like what can we help you with these days? You know, I think um, these days, to be completely blunt, I think it's just really, you know, job hunting and not just for me, but for other law students. You know, I've talked to a bunch of law firms already and they've said that because of COVID, they are going to be reducing their class sizes. So, you know, mentorship um, or just giving us information on what the actual job environment looks like or what the actual legal area that we're going into, what to expect, how to promote ourselves into that. I think that is really beneficial because, you know, I think in law school, we build up this like, it builds up this idea of like a general cloud of what these legal fields are, but not really what's in the cloud. And so I think getting an insight into that can help us as well to both tailor our own interests and our own goals and also, you know, help us decide what we actually want to do and how to further specialize ourselves. So I think that is really, you know, what everyone can do. And I think even us, we can do that for everyone else too, even as students, like we can help bring our new knowledge into the world. So. Mm, definitely. Okay. Well, this is great. It gives me some ideas on yeah. what to do. The other thing I, I'm thinking about these days is um, the world is going to be so different. And I feel like we haven't even seen the beginnings of how different it's going to be. And even though the job, like the firm job situation is harder, like the need for legal help is so enormous. Like so just looking around you, like people that get in touch with me all the time with small, medium, big questions, and no one has figured out how to connect those two yet together. So I hope an outcome of this is that that dam is broken and we're able to serve more because the need is there and the talent is there, like you're a perfect yeah. example. Yeah, you know, I think, um, like, they have this for, like, doctors and, like, general contractors, like a global director, like a website, where you, like, say the needs that you want, and then, like, it recommends some people in your areas, and it gives reviews and stuff. So I think, you know, it's crazy to me how that isn't there for lawyers. Um, and I think especially now, because even on this, like, group, I was going to some of the posts, there's so many posts about, like, 
knowing someone who needs these types of legal services. So, you know, I think cutting out that middleman and just really getting to that final information, that resource, I think that would be so helpful. Um, and I think hopefully, you know, that something that comes out of this pandemic is like the tech transition of like legal work like that. Yeah, yeah, and I encourage you to like, as as the innovator, the next generation, right, as you come out of this, like don't confine yourself to what's there. But you probably have a brilliant idea about all these things. So if you think bigger, it will help everyone think bigger. Yeah, you know, I think, yeah, that's something we all need to do. It's just like, you know, cut down our own boundaries and just, you know, surpass them. Because, you know, our own limits is only what we put on ourselves. So just it's, it's on us to go past it and do what we need to do. Beautiful. So Arjun, thank you so much. Before we go, uh, a Netflix or Hulu show that you watched lately that you can enjoy. Um, you know, recently, um, I was put on this by a friend, Shit's Creek. Um, and I finished that within a week. It's on Netflix. And I think it's so heartfelt. It's so loving. And in a time like right now, I was literally, I watched, I finished the season last night and I was crying my eyes because I was like, I don't want this to finish. And, you know, it's made in Canada too. It's made in Ontario. So it was kind of like close to home. But I think in general, it just has so many underlying concepts that it just suddenly, you know, presents to the world. It's so well done and it's so hilarious. So I think that is just like a light, happy show to watch right now. And then, you know, there's a new one on Apple TV, um, Tehran. That one is, yeah, that one's one that I'm waiting until the final episodes come out, but I've heard amazing things about it. So is I've it about Tehran? Or? It's about, um, it's about an, um, I believe, an Israeli spy um, who works who goes to iran to tehran to you know grab some intel but then they get stuck there um but what i've heard a lot of the reviews say is that it really well portrays iran and tehran and it's a really great portrayal even though it wasn't filmed there right so i'm i'm curious to see how that's done but i'm just waiting until the full series comes out and I can binge it all. <laughs> oh my god, we gotta get our hands on this set and make it like a shadow or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for those recommendations, Sarajan. Thanks for Thank talking you. to us. Thank uh, you for I, having uh, me. Uh, things get only easier, better for you from now on. And, and reach out to us anytime. Yes, and thank you to you for taking the time to chat and catch up, and thank you to anyone who joined in to watch. Um, it was great to be introduced to this wonderful group and world. Of course. Take care. Bye. Right, thank you. Bye.